The following is a presentation of the Bellip Sports Media Network. Jonathan Taylor requests a trade from the Colts, and there's a little bit of drama going on around that. Justin Gaethje wins by KO against Dustin Poirier, which is very exciting if you were able to watch UFC this weekend. If not, we are going to cover it tonight. And what will stop Georgia from a three-peat? Is there anything? We're going to talk about some things that could stop them and see what's most likely. And should Notre Dame join a conference? And if so, which one? We want to hear from you. And we're also going to go through top 20 players to look out for when it comes to this college football season. All of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We are so excited to bring you guys another edition of this show, Sports. We're going to talk sports and a lot of sports. That's pretty much it. Before we get started, I want to make sure that if you're watching this far, make sure to hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit that like button as well. That helps us out, helps us beat the algorithm, and you can comment down below. And first off, question of the, question of the day is... Who should try their hardest to pick up Jonathan Taylor? We want to know that from you guys. We want you guys to comment that down below. So who do you want to pick up Jonathan Taylor? Who should try the hardest to try to go after him? Because obviously he's not too happy there with Indianapolis. We'll talk a little bit more about that situation. But before we do, we have to mention our sponsor for today, and that is Big Frig. Big Frig has the best products when it comes to tumblers or coolers Pretty much anything they offer over there is the best, and you need to go check them out. Big Frig has given us some amazing products to try out. I see Jeremy's sliding his little tumbler over on on the screen for me uh, to make sure that we can show it off a little bit. And Big Frig really is amazing. It's an amazing product. We have tried their tumblers and their coolers, both amazing. I bring my cooler with me just about everywhere I go for work, trying to keep my food or my drinks cold, and it does an amazing job, keeps everything very very cold uh, and it keeps it cold as long as i need it to Uh, and you know it's just it's it's one of those coolers that actually acts too good because it keeps it too cold which is something that you can't complain about so guys go over to bigfrig.com and check out all the products that they offer like i said amazing products their coolers are one of a kind they're very rigid very uh, very secure they're going to lock shut and not fly open on you but they're also easy to open when you need to it's just it takes more of a manual effort rather than some coolers that just pop open when you don't want them to. So B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com, you can check out everything that they have there, and you can use code RISING220, that's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0, and get yourself 20% off their amazing products. Guys, we are, are totally happy to have them on board and sponsoring this show, and we definitely think that you need to go check them out. If you're in need of a new cooler for tailgating season, you want to go check out Big Frig. So again, bigfrig.com and use code RISING220 for 20% off. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring in my two co-hosts for the evening. I got Jeremy and Blake. How you guys doing? I'm hanging in there, man. Uh, glad to be here. I'm glad to talk some sports and uh, get this thing rolling, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Jeremy, how are you? I'm doing the same thing. Glad Monday's almost over. Then just ready to talk some sports and just get ready to kick it. Yeah, it was a, a really boring Monday for me. I mean, it wasn't too bad of a day, but it was just, it felt like it lasted forever. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. And I guess by the time people are saying this, Monday is over and you're on to Tuesday. So, hey, we're, we're making it through the week, guys. Hallelujah. You know, it's, it's, it's rolling. But let's first start off with Jonathan Taylor, guys. We're all football fans, obviously. Jonathan Taylor, one of the premier backs in the NFL right now, especially when you look at last season, really the last two seasons and what he's been able to do, putting up big time numbers. And now he's requesting a trade from the Colts. Uh, and really from some some uh, some remarks from Jim Ursay, which were just kind of confusing remarks to me. I'm not really sure why he had to bring Jonathan Taylor into the whole mix. Uh, I don't know. But more or less just kind of frustrated with with some of the remarks that that John Ursay said and uh, wanting out uh, and I'm sure maybe a little bit more than that behind the scenes too but then now we're even seeing where there are uh, kind of these these rumors that 
uh, the Colts are going to try to put him on a non-football injury list, uh, which Jonathan Taylor even responded to and went in a tweet and said, uh, one, never had back pain, two, never reported back pain, not sure who quote-unquote sources are, but find new ones. So, guys, I mean, what's what's going on here with, with really all the drama kind of going into it and where do we see Jonathan Taylor going? Uh, I mean, Blake, let's start off with you, man. I mean, what, what's going on in Indianapolis? Uh, I think it starts with bad leadership at the top, and uh, we all know what kind of we all know what kind of show Ursay runs. It's not a secret. Like, let's be honest with ourselves here. Uh, I've I've never really been a fan of what he what he does and how he uh, runs his show and and how he runs that franchise. I just don't think it's uh, I just don't think it's where it needs to be. Uh, and obviously, I think Jonathan Taylor kind of he, – he felt a little slighted and said, hey, I want out of here, you know. I, like, I don't think this is a place where I can win. Um, you know, I, look, you're, you're, you're in a division uh, that's probably the worst division in football. Um, maybe – I don't know, maybe the NFC South now. Uh, but – uh, you, you know, you're in there with the Jags and the Titans, um, and you're you're falling behind those two teams, in my opinion. You know, those two teams, they're they're going up, they're trending, and especially the Jaguars. And I think Jonathan Taylor kind of looks at it like, "Hey, we're backpedaling. Uh, we just took a risk at number four in the NFL draft with Anthony Richardson. He's a project, like." what are we doing? I think that's what Jonathan Taylor's mindset is, is is I was hoping you were going to get a franchise quarterback. And in my opinion, you took a, you took a chance, you know? And and so, uh, you know, good for Jonathan Taylor for asking to get out. And once again, Jim Irsay shows his maturity and, uh, or I should say lack of maturity and, and uh, starts taking personal jabs and things like that. I mean, come on, man, grow up, you know, uh, but Jonathan Taylor, where could he end up? Long shot, man. I, I've heard, I've heard the Commanders, but like, do they really need a back right now? I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they know. really want to bring him in right now. And if you're Jonathan Taylor, do you even want to go there right now? Um, but yeah, I mean, what I, about I, the what about the Vikings? Yeah, I mean, the Vikings need it, but they just released Dalvin Cook, who let's remember he's still on the market. Uh, they just released yeah. him for for salary cap issues. So are they going to be able to pay Jonathan Taylor what what he's going to you know be be requiring? But at the same time, it is a trade. Right. So maybe you maybe you are able to pawn off something to be able to make more salary cap. Something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I was trying to think of that too, and think of of teams that could really use him. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I, I know I know like the Eagles just lost uh, Miles Sanders, but I feel like they picked somebody up in the off season a little bit. Uh, to kind of help out at least i don't even know if they have cap room for it either um you know and of course saquon barkley was was possibly going to leave the giants but he's not now Uh, so i I mean i'm I'm just trying to think you know miami is expected to pick up dalvin cook uh britain uh, brought up uh he brought up we were talking about this the other day who was it tampa Uh, he brought up tampa bay okay as a possibility but they got they got leonard fournette so i don't really know if they need him and maybe maybe they trade him out i don't know Hey, I'm just throwing this out there. I think John the Taylor looked pretty good in black and orange with Cincinnati. Yeah. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, yeah, I understand we got Joe Mixon, but I mean now we don't have Samaj P. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's that to me I'm just I'm just spitting out something that's an option. But I mean Well, and you know how I feel about Joe Mixon. I mean, just getting yourself in too much trouble. Yeah, exactly. If the Bengals got Jonathan Taylor, my goodness, that would be filthy. I don't know if yeah. that could actually happen or anything I like doubt that. It. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm not up to date on the contracts. But well, I mean, who do the who do the Panthers have at, at running back right now? You know, that's that's another team that I kind of figured. Uh, you know, the, I don't really know. Uh, they, you know, they gave up CMC last year, so yeah, them. And then I'm also thinking of down down in Houston. They're going to need to put somebody at the back. They got a couple of new guys on the offense over there with between CJ Stroud and. Uh, and then they also picked up Quentin Johnston, I believe, is the wide receiver they picked up. So they're going to have a, got a couple of new guys out there, maybe get a veteran running back like Jonathan Taylor to maybe bounce out there and, and help down there in Houston. 
But yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I haven't really heard of too many trade rumors yet of where he could go. But I mean, you, you have any other uh, thoughts and, and where where he might end up? I mean, as you guys mentioned, Minnesota would be a a, spa, a spot I could easily think of just because, like you said, Dalvin Cook's not there as of now, of course. But I mean, I'm still. It's hard to get my mind out of black and black and orange now. Yeah. But I mean, overall, he can honestly go anywhere he really wants to. I know he was really disappointed with when he was talking about for the money. Like, I understand money makes everybody happy, at least you think. But I, I understand that he wasn't happy with all the supposed rumors that he said with injury problems with his back, like you just mentioned, which isn't true. Then I know. Looking even in the last season of the 2022, he was really he actually was pretty injured. Then I know, um, mm-hmm. like, I think he had was it ankle surgery he had during the off season. Um, I don't remember if he had. I know surgery, he had. Did he? I know he had surgery during the off season. I want to say it was maybe his ankle. Maybe. But, yeah, that's. But sounds I could be right. wrong. But I know, and they even said that he was also on the physically unable to perform list. I don't know. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what what they're they're throwing in there and i don't yeah. know if this is a way this this almost feels like it's a something's fish jim ursay kind of sliding something under under the table to try to get out of paying him yeah. is what what this feels like to me and I, I don't know exactly what's going on there in indianapolis i'm not in the room to see what's going on i don't have any inside information but it, it definitely seems yeah. a little fishy so these accusations are definitely not right something's a little stanky up in the air yeah. around indianapolis right now so I don't know, guys. I mean, it's it, it seems weird. It was it was very shocking news to hear it uh, at all, let yeah. alone this mm-hmm. this close to the season. You're already going through training camp. You're you're right there. We have preseason this week. Is it this yeah. week? I, I, yes, it's this week. Yeah. So I mean, I think it starts Thursday night, right? Yeah, I believe so. And so I mean, hey, congrats, guys. We made it. We made it back yeah. to college yeah. football season, baby. Let's go. Not college Let's football go. season, uh, just football season. Yeah, Let's go. I, I said college football season, but we made it back. You know, we're back, boys. This I thought I thought this week felt a little brighter. It was yeah. a little rainy out today, but it felt it felt brighter. Yeah. So yeah. you know, Once the that's, rain stopped, the sunshine. That's, that's probably why. Roses. But yeah, I, I don't know, guys. I mean, this is this is really weird. And and answer answer this for me too. If you're a fantasy football guy and you have a draft coming up very soon because I, I know guys that that they're doing their draft like this week yeah if yeah. jonathan taylor's not picked up do you try to still pick him up on your roster or do you just look at that and say i don't know there's too much that kind of stinks about this situation for me to pick him up i mean me personally i stay away from it because uh, it's just like what if the colts like keep him hostage you know like yeah. like uh i just I don't know. I, know. I stay away from it. I know. I saw you know the uh, head coach over there that they just picked up. I'm trying to think of who they who they just got. I saw I saw a quote from him saying you know that he had discussions with Jonathan Taylor, trying to trying to talk to him, wanting him to stay and still suit up for for the Colts too. So I mean, yeah. who knows? I mean, and, and if he is there with the Colts, uh, we we've seen this in the past. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a good example. We've seen this in the past though, where a guy sticks around with a team that he really doesn't want to be on, and you can tell. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, I, I don't really know. I, I feel like you saw that a little bit, uh, you know, uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to, th- trying to think of what, what scenario I'm thinking of off the, t- off the top of my head, but it's, it's happened and, and I don't want that to happen. So personally, I mean, I don't think I pick him up. We, we listed him in our top five. Yeah, we did. So, you know, for fantasy running backs, I mean, he is definitely a top five fantasy running back, a guy that you want on your team. Absolutely. I, I suppose if you can pick him up late in the draft, and maybe he slides down for you, and you can cop try him it. later on down there. Maybe you try it out, but don't don't say you heard that from me, because uh, mm-hmm. my suggestion is is you you keep away from guys, and just keep your ears out for him, you know, mm-hmm. and hurry up and be quick on the release and pick him up. Some people even say he was num- he was projected number one for running backs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mm-hmm. I know I've I've seen Jonathan Taylor, CMC, and Nick Chubb all three yeah. right up there in the top. Uh, and, and those are he's he's a guy that a lot of people would, would consider for a number one pick overall. Absolutely. So I mean, it's just that's tough. That's tough knowing that it's this this far in the season. And to all my fantasy owners out there, man, I good luck. I feel bad for you. Uh, you know, we we gotta we gotta we gotta think this through, guys. Yeah. You know, so you know who who are you gonna who are you gonna slide up there to your your top number one running back now? And you, you got to have three number ones at least. Because you know, really five number ones. Because you got to sit there and, and account for somebody else picking him up. 
So, you know, now you're dropping one guy out of your top five. Who's going to slide in there for you? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. And like I said, Dalvin Cook still hasn't signed yet, so we don't really know what's happening with him. A lot of rumors that he's going to Miami, but who knows? Maybe Miami says, ooh, you know what? There's Jonathan Taylor on the market. Sorry, Dalvin, maybe we'll push you to the side. There also was a video of him up in the Jets' practice facility, and there, there was a chant that, they were wanting Dalvin Cook. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a possibility. I mean, yeah, hey. and that, that just seems crazy to me, too, because you got Brees Hall up there. You, you know, you adding Aaron Rodgers and everything that they've added on offense. Yeah. Because they've added wide receivers around. Plus, they still got uh, Garrett Wilson. I mean, mm-hmm. man, if the Jets pick him up, uh, pick up Dalvin or, or Jonathan. Because if, if, if they were able to, yeah, if they were able to, I don't think they'd have the cap to p- pick no, up both. No, I, but. I'm kind of questioning if they could pick up one of them. But uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. But. Looking at Jonathan Taylor, that's we, we want to hear from you guys. Where do you where do you want to see Jonathan Taylor, or who who do you think needs him the most? Because, like I said, I think I think off the top of my head, I think trying to think of of specific locations. Oh I do like gosh. the Cincinnati. I don't know if that's a possibility or not. If you get rid of Joe Mixon, I think that'd be a great great swap around. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I like I like Cincinnati just because I like I like the Bengals, uh, and and seeing them succeed. But I mean, man. If you could see him go to Carolina or Houston, those are the top two off the top of my head that I'm thinking of that could really use a back right now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I want to hear from you guys. But let's jump over to the UFC real quick. I don't know if you guys were able to watch the UFC at all this weekend. I was really busy. You had to watch reruns. So for everybody who hadn't watched this fight, there were some other really fun fights. Uh, it wasn't quite as action-packed this weekend. Uh, whenever I was watching some of the undercards and stuff like that, uh, you, you know, it, it just it wasn't, it wasn't as action-packed as i think the last ufc fights that we had it was just it felt like non-stop just really fun knockouts and really fun fights that, that were going on where this one just didn't didn't have that same feel but still ufc is always exciting to me um but to watch justin gaethje come out he was an, an underdog by quite a bit of a margin he just mm-hmm. lost the last time that he fought dustin poirier he lost in a tko um so you know he Definitely wanted to come out and win this one. Uh, plus, this was for the BMF title. Uh, and so, I mean, that's that's some bragging rights right there. I mean, you, you talk about the BMF. Let's see, it was Nate Diaz and uh, Jorge Masvidal that fought for that one the last time that I, that I can remember this this title fight going on. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's a big title to hold. And to win it like this was absolutely uh, insane. Oh, you know, so if you if you hadn't been able to watch it, I encourage you to go back. I think it was a fun fight. I'm glad it lasted into the second round because these are two really good fighters. Yeah. Uh, they've this is uh, this is Justin Gaethje. I think they said it was his 29th fight. Yep. Uh, and he comes out, wins it in a, in a KO with a head kick, and he let Dustin Poirier lay there for a little <laughs> while uh, after he went down. But Blake, I don't know if you were able to watch much of it, but little shout out to to Justin Gaethje for being able to pull that off. Yeah, uh, guys, I watched all of it, and uh, it, it was it was a pretty good card, right? Uh, I feel like the Pereira fight kind of took a little juice out of the card yeah. uh, because uh, John wanted to just sit there and lay on him the entire time, and then he felt like he got robbed. But Pereira, you know, landed more strikes, and he had the leg kicks to the uh, to the calves that were really nice. Uh, but I felt like that fight took a little juice out of the out of the card. But uh, congrats to Justin Gaethje, man. Uh, he come out and landed a head kick, and that's not what his game's about. Yeah. You know, he, he doesn't. He he's not a he's not a big kick guy. You know, uh, and and I think that's what caught uh, DP right. I, I I don't think DP really. Uh, I don't think he was going to throw that kick again. Gaethje threw it one time earlier in the fight. Uh, but it wasn't of any kind of force or anything like that, you know. And DP just uh, he blocked it, get it out of here. And I don't think he, I don't think he thought Justin was going to throw it again, and he got caught. Uh, obviously, the hand was there, but it wasn't enough. Four ounce gloves, uh, and and he got him. And when he got him, uh, big shout out to Herb Dean, yeah. uh, sliding in yes. safely. Yeah. Uh, at home plate, what a slide that yeah, I mean, was! Gaethje so, was he was going on top too, ready to start yeah. pounding him too. Yeah. So yeah, Herb, Herb Dean. I, I've I've heard people say that they don't like Herb, I, you know. And, and there's definitely times where I've seen Herb stop a fight a little too soon, 
-hmm. but there's there's also been times where i've seen him let it ride out because there's still a possibility and jumping right at the right at the perfect time yeah. and I, yeah. I i personally think he's my favorite referee to see in there just because like you said like sliding in at the perfect timing to stop something that's tough to do i mean i mean ufc is a fast paced game it doesn't look like it from from the stands at all times or from watching it through your tv but uh, a, a really good one. I can I can remember uh, really vividly when we watched uh, we watched uh, Conor McGregor come back and, and fight Cowboy, and the way that he let that one ride out just a little longer, but then stepped in right whenever it was like, nope, it's it's, it's over. Uh, yep. And you know, just Herb Dean has always been that way, and I've always I've always liked him a lot. But yeah, definitely definitely a shout out to him. Absolutely. I mean, Herb Dean's it, without a doubt my my favorite referee. Like it it takes one thing to watch the UFC, but to be able to be in the octagon with them beating each other up, that's a whole different situation. Like, you you even take the possibility. You can take a punch, you can yeah. take a knee, you can take a kick, whatever the situation is. You got to do what you got to do. But, I mean, I didn't get a chance to watch much of the fight. I saw the last little snippet before the knockout kick, and... That looked so brutal. And of course, you got to expect the unexpected of this situation. As you mentioned, Blake, he threw a kick earlier, and he just just acted like it was not the nonchalant. Just, oh, nope, see you later. Let's just keep going. But, I mean, towards the end of the fight, you can tell he was just trying to drain him and just let him know that give it another round, then I'm going to get the gas going, then we can get something rolling. But overall, it was a really fun fight. I haven't had a chance to watch any of the other the littler cards, but I was definitely going to go back and watch it today. Then overall, from what I've seen, though, it looked like a like a really good technical fight, and it was really fun to watch. And hopefully, the next card can bring the same anticipation, momentum, and overall, it's definitely going to be the UFC is just fun to watch in general, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I, I personally think it's one of the more more fun uh just g gather around get get some food and and, and drinks up, going you know yeah. and just jump or jump around with with a bunch of boys and just have fun with it you know and watch it you know i, I think that's it's it's one of the most fun events you can throw Definitely. when when chilling out at the house you know and just watching i mean it's it's fun too because you know that when they're in the octagon it's a war but once they're finished to see the respect given to each fighter, you know, and there, there's very few guys that are still cocky and won't shake your hand afterwards or come and give you a hug and tell you how good you fought, you know, and hey, man, I didn't didn't expect you to throw this or whatever the case may be. The the sportsmanship is much, much more a factor in UFC than you realize because you're used to seeing all the trash talk beforehand, yeah. but that's all part of it. That's all part of the game. And so I think that's what kind of gets UFC a little bit of, backlash look on but, twitter how much backlash do you see there yeah absolutely i mean you, you i think i think ufc is a lot of fun so i mean if you're not into ufc i think that's a it's it's a sport that's it, it's fun to, to really study it and to recognize how difficult it is uh, I, I did some mixed martial arts oh, well, my it was my senior year uh and and trying some of that and just how difficult it is to know when to dodge certain things and the fact that you know there's some guys that are so good at faking one thing and sliding in another i mean it's you you gain a lot more respect whenever you've actually been in the situation so to, to just to watch it watch yeah. several fights and watch several fighters uh and see how how fun it is um just because it's it is it's a it's very difficult sport and it's more than just beating each other's face in yeah uh, so i mean I, I think that i think it can get a lot of bad rap but a lot of fun fun thing is i did martial arts too on the ufc you? on my xbox oh, yeah. i'll stick to that <laughs> yeah i mean it, i was definitely i wasn't out there like getting my face beat up or nothing i had the headgear on and everything but you know just trying to keep it as safe as i can and you do but, that i'll stick to this yeah and i was i was i was a big wrestler in, in high school and stuff all, all the way through from junior high into high school and so yeah. i loved loved wrestling um and uh, that's kind of what got me into it i thought you know i'll, I'll give it a shot um but yeah absolutely a a, a very I don't know if I'd say an, an underrated sport or not because I think it's growing a lot. So it's one of those sports that's it really is. growing. And I think whenever it's it's this part of the season where you're in a break, it's it's nice to just sit back and watch a little bit of UFC since you don't have any other sports to be watching. Mm -hmm. But, guys, I know we're, we just talked about football. We jumped over to UFC. Let's go back to football real quick because, let's be honest, that's where we live. That's what we breathe. Let's go over to 
the reigning national champs, the two-time reigning national champs. We got the Georgia Bulldogs. It's a lot of speculation and looking forward to the Bulldogs and trying to think, you know, is is it possible that they're able to go for a three-peat? And you think back two years ago when they won their first national championship, it was, it was amazing. And we thought, man, that team was so good. That team was so sound on defense. They were phenomenal on offense. Mm -hmm. But then they lose a lot of key players, a lot of star players on both sides of the ball. And especially when you look over on the offensive side and thinking, man, like, you know, they, how, how can they come back? You know, they, they lost George Pickens. I mean, that's a, that's a big loss. How can they possibly come back? They're not going to be as good on offense. And everyone said if they do win, it's going to be because of their defense. Their defense stood up, and we expected them to, but their offense still looked phenomenal all season long last year. And they, they went all through that throughout the season, putting up big numbers on offense and, and constantly fighting through on offense. So it, it's tough to look at Georgia, and a Kirby Smart-led Georgia at that, and think that there's not a way that they squeeze in the door for a three-peat. And so I kind of wanted to pick your guys' your guys' brain if we if we have to sit here and think of what could be the deciding factor uh, for for Georgia, and and you know what what could be the the thing that that hurts Georgia the most. And we haven't been able to jump into our SEC preview, but this is this is something that I think would be fun to kind of think about. Is is what is something that would stop Georgia from being able to make that three peat? Uh, and, and first off, I'll, I'll bring up, I think, I think the, the quarterback position is a little bit of a question mark because we look back again a couple of seasons ago, we saw what Stetson Bennett did in this, their, their first national championship, but then him turning it around, nobody really saw him being that special of a talent. Everybody said he's not really that good, but he turned around and did the same thing and brought his team to another national championship. And so we look over at Georgia. We know that they're going to have Carson Beck stepping in. He's a junior. He's a redshirt junior. Uh, he's been around. They also have uh, Brock Vandegrift in the, in, you know, on, on the depth chart as well, uh, who I've heard a lot of good things about. And then you know, coming up soon, they'll, they'll have Dylan Riola. Uh, so I mean, here coming in, in the later on, we know that they've they've got a QB room. But looking at Carson Beck. And comparing him, I, 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 I hate to compare him to Stetson Bennett, but comparing him to, to the guy that just now won them two national championships, is the quarterback position something that could hold Georgia back? Or do you see maybe something else, maybe another position group that could hold Georgia back from that three-peat? I'll, I'll start off with you, Blake. I feel like you're pretty well-versed when it comes to the SEC and, and football that's going on over there. Guys, I... I'm not going to say they got better at quarterback uh, because Stetson Bennett was the mailman and he delivered and in the clutch situations. But uh, as far as a complete passer and, and in the pocket and delivering the ball down the field, Carson Beck is a dude, man. Yeah. Carson Beck is legit. Um, and, and he's gotten some playing time uh, because Georgia's been up in some – in some games and everything. And he even got to play in that national championship game last year because it was so lopsided after the second drive of the game. Uh, but I look at this Georgia team and their schedule is so favorable, man. I think they go to Tennessee, like the next to last game of the year. Yeah. Uh, I think that's their hardest game on the schedule. I, I think they, they could lose that game. I don't, it's a possibility. I don't know. Um, it's going to be tough. Like, uh, Neyland Stadium is one of the loudest stadiums in the country. Those fans are absolutely nuts. Could Tennessee be in a position to win the East as well? I mean, could that could the SEC East come down to that game? Who knows? Um, but, man, it's going to be tough to keep Georgia out of the college football playoffs. And then you know when they get into the college football playoffs, they're going to uh, just – they're going to be a mismatch for people. Uh, they got they have the best player in college football on their football team. Okay, yeah. Brock Bauer, their tight end. He's the most physically gifted football player in college football today. Uh, he could sit out. He could sit out this year, not even play, and be a top three pick in the draft next year. That's how good he is. Um, so. I'm not sure if anything can hold this team back, honestly. Uh, they are legit. Uh, 
maybe maybe stop speeding around town. <laughs> maybe uh, yeah, maybe stop speeding around town. That's probably the only thing that can hold them back, or uh, if the bus breaks down and they can't make the game. So, uh, other than that, man, this team is set up. They're set up to play for a three peat, be in that college football playoff. I'm not going to say they're going to win it. I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to three-peat because college football is a crazy game. But, man, if they're not in that college football playoff, I think their season is a failure, a massive failure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, looking at at Georgia this year, too, uh, like I said, really the quarterback position is the only thing I can look at. You brought up Brock Bowers being an amazing tight end, coming back for another season. Unbelievable. Uh, You know, just looking at everything that that they've got, I, I, the only other position group that I can think that they've got some young guys in that could be a little bit of a question mark is just their depth on the defensive line, you know, the defensive front, because they've got three guys that are all red shirt freshmen. But that's the only other position group that I look at and I say maybe that's a little bit less of a depth. So can their front because George is known for being that front that that front seven, you know, that that kind of kind of uh, team. You know, the, those front five guys are, are what's going to create the most. Uh, you know, problems and most havoc when it comes to to each and every one of their games, uh, and and they're going to bust through and, and stop runs. They're going to bust through and get to the quarterback, put pressure on him, whatever the case may be. And so that's the only other position group as far as as far as defense. It's it's only that front that I I can see that has just not as much depth as we've seen. But like I said, Jeremy, we've we've seen this in the past where Georgia's there's no way that they can go back and two Pete because they're not going to be as good this year. And then they turn around and they do it anyways. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're called the top dog for a reason. But, like, looking at Georgia, the only physical thing I can think of that can maybe at least slow them down is get inside their head. Yeah. Like, you you get one sack out of a series, and, of course, you're going to hear you're gonna hear chirping during it, of course. You're not going to want to hear it, but, I mean, you're going you're gonna to have to suck it up and hear it. And... That's the only physical thing I can think of is just play mind games and just get inside their head and try and slowly manipulate them and break them down. But Georgia, just looking at it, they're they're the team right now. And I don't know what else I could physically think of to, to break them down overall, but what you got, Blake? No, I, I, I didn't want to cut you off, Jeremy, but, but to your point about uh... – you know, the trash talk and trying to mentally break them down. This was the same program that Kirby Smart sat on national television last year after the national championship game and, and he told his he told his team that they were going six and six last year. Okay. He sold a vision to that locker room that the national media told them that they were going six and six. I, I don't know if this team can be broken like that. I really don't. Well, and it's it's also a a Kirby Smart who we've seen winning a game by a a substantial margin and still over there and yelling at guys for not filling a hole. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a Kirby Smart that kept his guys from going to the White House because, no, we got to focus on on our upcoming season. Yeah. You know, this is a a Kirby Smart that I, I, I think. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to compare him to Nick Saban because I think they're two different coaches totally. Oh, 100%. But, but knowing that he came from from Nick Saban's tutelage and understanding that that's that's one of his old old assistants, he definitely took what Nick Saban had and made it his own. Yeah. In, in such a great way, and it was it's it's been phenomenal to watch what Kirby Smart's done with that program because honestly, uh, Mark Richt had that program looking pretty good. You know, they they were able to to make it uh, up. And, and be a contender several years, but then to take over and turn that into a different monster, into a into a a bigger monster than what even they were before. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy to look at at what Kirby Smart's been able to do with Georgia uh, and bringing yeah. them to this point. Um, so yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I want to hear from from everybody else too. Another opportunity for you to comment down below is is do you think Georgia can three peat? And if not, what's their weakness? What yeah. stands in their way? Is it is it one of these position groups that we brought up, or is it maybe media? Maybe media finally breaks this team, um, or maybe it's Tennessee. Uh, you know, that's because 
I, I agree with you, Blake. I think that's the only the only team on the schedule that I look at, and I think, man, like that's the only that's the only one that has a chance to really slip in that door, just because we know who Georgia is. Yeah. We know well, how tough they are. You know, I'm gonna say this. You can call me a homer or whatever. Um, at Auburn is gonna be a little difficult. And the reason I say this is because that's the that's the oldest uh, the Deep South's oldest rivalry, right? It's a heated rivalry. It's, there's a lot of hatred in that game, um, and Georgia went on the road last year to Missouri and almost got beat. All right, so you're gonna have a hiccup game somewhere that you're not gonna play well. And you got to try to find a way to win it. I think that game could be at Jordan Hare, where I'm not saying they lose by any means. Don't get that twisted. I'm just saying that I think they could possibly go to Jordan Hare and find themselves in a dogfight middle of the third quarter and say, hey, look, <laughs> we got to get it together, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'll call it right now Auburn upsets Georgia. No way. But, but, no. <laughs> but Not this year. even if Auburn beats Georgia, they still have a chance at the SEC championship game. So maybe that's where that's why Tennessee yeah. is the one that breaks them. We don't know. Maybe that Rocky Top stands tall. That's a possibility. Um, but, guys, let, let's jump into it. We've got a little bit. Uh, what do we say we're going to call it? A two-minute drill, yeah, right? we're going to bust it in two-minute drill. Before we do, let's jump over and mention another sponsor of ours, and that is SeatGeek because we have to talk about SeatGeek and how amazing it is. Because if you're a fan of live events, whether it's sports or music or theater, you know how challenging it can be to find seats and find the right tickets at the right price. That's where SeatGeek comes in because it makes a seamless mobile experience. You go to SeatGeek and it allows you to buy tickets uh, and you go on there in just two taps. Two taps, you buy them, it's very simple. So simple. And it doesn't get any simpler than that, guys. So it gets even better though, because SeatGeek grades every ticket purchase, every ticket price from red to green based on value to help you immediately identify the best seats to fit your budget. Because you look at a red, you know it's not as good of a deal. You look at a yellow and it's an okay deal. You're getting a pretty good price here, but you look at that for that green dot on the map and you know you're looking for a great price right there. It's a great way to find tickets. Plus, every purchase is fully guaranteed, so you can shop securely with a complete peace of mind. So we love Geek Seat, uh, seat Geek Seat, wow. So we seat love Seat Geek, geek so much. Uh, see, we love, we love them so much, we can't even pronounce it right sometimes. But we mm -hmm. love them so much that we've teamed up with them to give you guys an amazing offer, and you can use our code R2TO at checkout, and boom you get $20 off your ticket purchase. So go over there, check them out. It's SeatGeek.com or use the SeatGeek app and pick out those perfect tickets and enter the pro promo code R2TO for an awesome $20 off. SeatGeek, life's an event, and we have your tickets. All right, now let's get back to the show. All right, two-minute drill. Jeremy, give right. us our topics. First one, USA, U12 versus New Zealand's close 43-1 to game. Overall... I know the game was supposed to be played the night before, but of course, what Mother Nature always has to throw a havoc in it. Then this is a new record for the team. A the original record was 29 runs in a game, and they didn't just barely beat it; they beat it and then so, <laughs> almost doubled. Yeah, they almost doubled it. I mean, this is absolutely amazing for the USA 12 under kids. And then this is an unbelievable experience for them to witness. Then. Um, I know, I don't know when they play next, but I know overall after what they all went through and having that rain delay, then getting postponed, I know that puts a lot of, a lot of wear on yourself, getting physically, mentally prepared. Then I know coming into the next day, it's like a whole flip of a switch and just on go mode and let's just go. But what do you got to take about it, Josh? Yeah, I mean, it was it was crazy. We, we talked about the Angels beating up on the Rockies. What was that, 29, 29 to 1? And we thought that was crazy. But now you look over at these kids. This is, this is younger, yeah. uh, right? So because 12 I didn't even know if this was going on. And yeah. all of a sudden, I see this headline over some baseball game of USA. I'm like, of course, I want to root for USA. Why didn't you? Why didn't you advertise this to me so I could watch them whoop up on New Zealand? Mm -hmm. You know, and put up 43 points. It was. Yep. So 43 points. I mean, hats off to you, boys. Like you keep on fighting for this country and put up those numbers because this is the new way 
to fight wars. We put down the guns and all this stuff. Stop getting all violent and stuff. We're, we're playing sports, all right? Exactly. This is this is the way to do it. We go over to New Zealand and show them who's boss by a bunch of these kids going over there and whooping them up 43 to 1, right? Yep. So, yeah, I love it. Blake, do you have anything to cap off for that close game? Uh, yeah, New Zealand, turn your stuff in. All right. <laughs> uh, you're, you're just not good, all right? Because, period, uh, it, it kind of felt like an Oppenheimer movie out there uh 43 to one so uh just uh yeah keep on keeping on for the united states good for them kids and uh keep swinging it and you know i, I bet they're if i had to put money on it their only competition is probably going to be japan uh you know so. <laughs> yeah i mean the, you're, you're probably not wrong on that too yeah, i like that i wrong. like that prediction but let's go keep on rolling topper number two the broncos kj hamler stepping away from treatment of heart issues then i know they announced he announced on i think it was instagram that Mm -hmm. um he got diagnosed with a mild heart irritation and he will miss some time but he is intended to be back on the field this season after treatment and medication now how would you guys feel about getting that kind of a scare i mean take it for granted like obviously he's gonna begin treatment and medication but wouldn't that still be lingering in your mind throughout this entire time? What would you got to say, Blake? No, uh, I listened to Demar Hamlin today actually say that his faith is stronger uh, that than was an any unbelievable fear. speech. Yep, and uh, he said that his his faith is stronger than anything that he uh, fears. So uh, you know, he knows that there's a chance of that could possibly happen to him again, and and I'm sure. In, in this case, and, you know, you, you, have a, you have a hole in your heart or, or a heart defect or anything like that, uh, it's probably scary, right? And, but you know that you can trust uh, the Denver Broncos training staff. Uh, everybody there in that facility is going to take the best care of you, uh, and you are going to get top-notch treatment. Uh, so you can come back and you can perform at the highest level uh, in the world, right? And and in, in the greatest league in, in the world. So, you know, yeah, it would be in the back of your mind of like, hey, you know, yeah, I have a heart condition, but uh, as long as you go to the doctor and do your treatments right and and you get okayed and cleared to play football, you know, you got to trust the people that you talk to, right? Because Look, if you love the game, if you love the game, you'll go out. You'll go out if if that's what it is. You know, you'll mm-hmm. go out because you just have a love of the game. I've heard people say like, "Hey, I'll die on this field because I love the game that much. I love doing what I do that much. I would go out on the field." And so, uh, you know, I think these dudes, man, they put their heart and soul uh, every Sunday. You know, Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday, uh, they put their heart and their soul into it, and and they love the game. So yeah, hey, get back. I would love it to to see him back on uh, back on the field this fall, and uh, you know, prayers to him. I hope everything works out, and uh, you know, he's always got Demar Hamlin to a phone call away to reach out and say, hey man, like when you were going through all of this, how did you handle it, and and uh, you know, if I got any questions, can I call you? So I think that's a, a hand he might be able to uh, reach out and and uh, get in contact with. So that's yeah, that's just my opinion. Absolutely. I mean, you said it the best. That, I was even going to bring that up, obviously, with what DeMar Hamlin went through, then going through all the the rehabilitation re- and everything, going through the doctors, and that was mm-hmm. going to be a big thing that brought up. But obviously you said the best, Blake. Then, Josh, do you have anything else to top it off? Yeah, I mean, like like Blake said, you know, thoughts and prayers out to you. I, I hope Absolutely. KJ gets better. I mean, this is this is still scary, uh, I mean, you know, through, through everything, you know, thinking of a heart condition. But to the mainstream media, to doctors out there, whoever it is that's making this decision, can we please investigate this? Can we please look into why these young guys – are all of a sudden starting to have heart conditions. We look mm. at, at DeMar Hamlin. We look at Bronny James. We look over here at KJ Hamlin. Mm-hmm. This this is becoming an issue. And th- there's a lot more cases that don't get brought to light. Yep. You look over at like soccer or even tennis that's happened. Uh, you know, there, there's been some uh, some cases uh, over overseas and in the U.S. Mm-hmm. It's, it's been happening all over. 
and I know you you don't want to to pull out and and, and prove the conspiracy theorists right. I, if that's a worry, sure, I suppose you don't want to you don't want to prove them right. But can we please just get to the bottom of it? When people were getting concussions, and it was becoming a problem, guess what we did? We put our pride aside and said, you know what, we love the game of football. But we need we need to figure out what's happening. We That's need to figure true. out a way to pr- protect these guys. So please, can we please look into this and stop worrying about what everyone else is saying and what everyone else is thinking and just look into this because people's lives are at stake right now when we keep on letting this happen and not looking into what it is that's causing it to try to fix it. Absolutely. Going to top of number three, 49ers, 49ers GM understanding Nick Bosa's absence after missing a week of training camp. I uh, know after nearly missing a week and actually getting the full pads and getting everything, John Lynch, the 49ers GM, said, I don't like not having one of our best players here, but the 49ers held their first fully padded practice, like I said, without the star, and they will exhibit some patience and understanding that they ultimately will let this thing work out. Now, the thing that kind of caught me off a little bit, I understand that you need to report to practice and you need to – Stay on top of your stuff, but going unsaid with anything like that kind of confused me a little bit. Josh, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I, I get uh, hats off to the GM for saying the right thing. Yep, you don't want to say the wrong thing and piss off one of the greatest guys on your roster right now. Definitely, but to 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 little Bosa, I get that you're great and I get that you want want a lot of money, but show up to practice, dude. Stop! Stop playing these games. Just show up to practice. If if you really want that money, prove it. I I, I don't I don't like this whole this whole contract negotiation. I'm going to sit off to the side. Personally, I'm I'm not for it. I I I view the NFL and this game the same way as I view the guys that are working for me. If you want to be paid, you got to show up. Uh, and so personally, I don't like it. Uh, hats off to the GM for saying the right thing. I think that's what you got to say when you want him to sign the deal and come back to the squad. But Bosa, grow up. You said the best, and that's, that was honestly the first thing in my mind. You got to just, you, you can do what you want, but you got to do what you know what you know is right, and you just got to show up to practice. Yeah. I mean, Blake, do you have anything to say? Yeah, just same thing you guys said, man. Show up. Uh, do your job. Uh, that You know, that's what we hear in football uh, all the time, right, is you do your job. Don't worry about doing anybody else's job. You do your job show up to practice. All right? you, you're supposed to be a leader. You're supposed to be one of the top players in the league. Do your job, man. This ain't the NBA where we sit out for rest management and and we're getting $264 million uh, you know, f- over four years and, and uh, load management. We only play 30 games out of 80 and all that bull crap. Dude, get out there, practice, play the games, Get after it and and be the guy that we expect you to be. And that's absolutely. how I feel on it. Absolutely. I mean, to me, obviously, I know we've all played football before. Like, yeah, we've all had our mindset. You just need to stick to like what you just mentioned, Blake. You got to stick to being you and just do the right thing for crying out loud. But staying on the t- on the football topic, going to our last two minute, Nebraska's DB Miles Farmer suspended indefinitely. The team's second leading tackle was last season was not on the man roster. And when Nebraska opened the practice on Monday, and they were really uncertain just because even Matt Rule released a statement saying that suspended him indefinitely but didn't release the reason other than to say it had to do with a failure to adhere team standards. Exactly. What could that mean? I So, Miles Farmer, for those who don't know, he was he – was uh, issued a DUI yep. a little while back. Uh, and so personally, hats off to Matt Rule for doing the Nebraska thing because this is something like there was a lot of things that I felt like slid under the radar. And whenever you're living around here close to, to the Nebraska news and stuff like that, you hear some of these things going on in the Nebraska facilities and you know with the players. Yep. And Nebraska has never been that way. Nebraska has always been strict. So hats off to, to Matt Rule for deciding the right thing on, on a big player too. Miles Farmer's a, a He's a, he's a good player. Yeah, he's he's, he's a player. he's a talented player, and, and to to release him just like that for doing you know doing the right thing and, and holding him to a standard that you would hold all the guys. Absolutely, uh, hats off to you because that's a really tough thing to do when you're the new guy in town mm-hmm. on top of everything else that going going on with it. So, uh, Miles Farmer, get your life together, bro, because you, you got talent. Absolutely. Go go show that talent. 
but but keep yourself keep yourself humble dude uh, I, I know it's not easy I, I get it but you've got to do the right thing and, and hats off to Matt rule for doing the right thing absolutely I mean that's why I brought this topic up because I know we just recently talked about these college teams and we also talked about Nebraska and I know as we all mentioned Matt rule is going to be the new dog in town and he wants to set his standards and let people fear Nebraska like they used to fear Nebraska back in the day then Blake mm-hmm. do you have anything to top it off for the last session uh no, just uh, Matt Rule. Uh, way to set a standard. Way to way to uh, way to lay the law down and, and just say, down. hey, look, you know, I, yeah, this is how I'm gonna this is how I'm gonna run my program, and this is how we're gonna do things. And uh, if you mess up, you're out of here. And you know, I'll get somebody in here that wants to play for me, and uh, you know, abide by the rules. So uh, good for him, and and to the kid, you know, hey. Uh, everybody deserves a second chance, right? And uh, and when you get that second chance, make sure you you grab it and you take a hold of it and you and you just run with it, all right? Absolutely. And and never look back, never look back at the mistake that was made, and um, and make the most of your second chance. So uh, he'll end up back on his feet somewhere, and and uh, hopefully he he makes all the right decisions. Look, one thing I want to say: uh, drinking and driving. All right, we have too many things in this country that can prevent drinking and driving. All right, we have Uber, we have Lyft, you got taxis, uh, you, you got anything, people. You got a friend, you got a cell phone in your pocket. We got Apple Watches that you can call off of. Uh, it's not hard, people. It's not, okay? Because one thing I always hear from young people is, oh, I drive better when I'm drunk. You don't, no. okay? You you don't. You drive significantly worse, all right? Uh, and I have a five year old daughter. I have a two week old son. I have a wife that is right there in the living room, and uh, I, I want them to be able to get out on the highway and be safe uh, from from drunk drivers uh, because. Uh, you know, it's just it's senseless in, in today's time uh, to be drinking and driving, in my opinion. There's just so many other ways. Uh, and if you if you have a friend that is thinking about drinking and driving, reach out and say, hey, look, man, give me your keys. All right. Uh, ride with me. Whatever. Stop drinking and driving. It's not worth it. You can take a life. Look at Henry Ruggs. I'm from the state of Alabama. I remember when Henry Ruggs was playing high school football, fellas, and Henry Ruggs was everything in this state. He was going to the University of Alabama. He went to play for Nick Saban, and he gets drafted by the Raiders, and he goes out to Vegas, and he takes the life of a 22, 23-year-old female who had everything ahead of her, uh, all over, uh, you know, a senseless, a senseless act where it could have been stopped. So, uh, you know, just at the end of the day, sit down, think about what you're doing and make better decisions, process things, man, process them. Absolutely. I mean, you can have said it any better. I mean, I can, I can probably speak for all of us. We've probably had friends, even maybe possibly family, that have gotten themselves injured, even possibly taking their life, driving drunk or making the wrong decision. Seriously, make the right decision. We love yes. having you guys here. We'd rather talk to you in person than than looking up in the clouds and then doing the same thing. Please, mm-hmm. please, obviously drink responsibly and just make the right decisions, guys. Yeah, we but. need we need more bartenders like Domingo down at the castle. You know where he'll he'll see that you have too much and he'll go up and he'll demand for your keys. Yeah, place them behind the counter and say, "I'll give these back to to whoever's going to drive you home." Exactly. You know, uh, you know, just uh, it, it's a big thing. Just be responsible. Exactly. But That's guys, it. guys, let's close it out uh, with Notre Dame. I did want to get into top twenty players, but I think I have a, a different uh, approach to it and how I want to go about it. Plus, just for time's sake, because. We don't have enough time to go through all top twenty players, so maybe we'll break this up, and we'll also I'll also assign uh, each of the players to uh, each of us, you know, kind of break it up a little bit too. Um, but let's let's go ahead and jump over and, and, and end the episode on Notre Dame, uh, a team that I'll be honest, I don't really care for Notre Dame, and I haven't for a long time because they're not in a conference, and that always frustrated me. I'm looking at Notre Dame like, how do you think you deserve to be? 
I've said the same thing with teams that got in, you know, teams like Alabama, teams like uh, Ohio State, who don't even win their conference, yet they think they deserve to be in the top four to play for a national championship. Yep. Same thing goes for Notre Dame. Uh, and this this gets brought up again. I think we we may have talked about this a while back on the show, too, but to talk about Notre Dame, because with all this conference realignment, uh, conference stacking, however you want to call it, we have to think about how each team and, and talking about these big teams, the big national teams, how they're going to fit in. And I think Notre Dame is one of them to bring up because we can we can talk about how Colorado's going over now. Where's going? Where's Oregon going to end up? And where's you know we can talk about all these other teams that are being shifted around. But Notre Dame is not even in a conference. Yep. So yep. where where do they go from here? Uh, and this gets brought up mainly because uh, Dabo Sweeney says something. He he had a quote something about uh, how. He, he thinks that, that it's good for them to join in the ACC. And thinking about Notre Dame and how they're joined in the ACC in several sports, I know baseball, uh, basketball. I think it's everything but football and hockey. Yeah, honestly. I mean, it's, it's crazy that they're not joined in with every sport. I don't understand how that works, how you can make that work, how that makes sense to anybody. But, I mean, it's, it's really all for money. Uh, let's be honest. It, it's all for money and also being able to create your schedule however you want. Mm-hmm. So let's put Notre Dame in, 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 in an, a, a conference, whatever conference they want to go to. But, guys, I want to hear from you guys because I've also heard some compelling arguments that they're kind of in Big, Big Ten territory. Do they stick with the Big Ten? Or does it make sense for them just to go ahead and sign on with the ACC and, and complete complete their entire program being fit into the ACC. I'll start off with you, Blake. Uh, I think they need to go to the Big Ten. Uh, and here's okay. why U- USC and UCLA are making their way over to the Big Ten. And we know that USC and Notre Dame rivalry is always a big one. Uh, they played Ohio State last year. They play Ohio State this year. I think they should play Ohio State every year. Um uh, you know, looking at a Notre Dame Penn State game at, at Happy Valley in a whiteout setting, I think that would be phenomenal for That's college electric. football. But yes, absolutely electric, Jeremy. Uh, I think Michigan and Notre Dame in the big house and then, uh, you know, going into to uh, touchdown Jesus, I think that would be absolutely electric for college football as well. Um, even Notre Dame and Michigan State, there's been history there, right? Like, um, I think the Big Ten geographically also uh, sets up well for Notre Dame, but the reason I'm not going to sit here and say the ACC is because there's been rumors of like Clemson, Florida State, possibly Miami leaving the ACC soon. Uh, I think North Carolina was also another school that was rumored to possibly be leaving soon. So yeah. I don't think the ACC would be a good move in my opinion. Uh, because if Notre Dame would just to get over there and then all those schools leave, it would just be uh, a cluster over there in the ACC, and it would be a sinking ship, kind of like the Pac-12 is right now. Yeah. But one thing that is guaranteed in college football is Notre Dame will never join a conference, ever, period. You don't think they'll ever join? No. not really? not. I, I honestly don't think they would join in our lifetime. I really don't. Just I because like I feel like they're being backed into a raw wall right now. Um, Definitely, you know, and and the, they're the going to come out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, but, I, I, go ahead. You you y'all, y'all want to know why? Because they are their their tradition. They're uh, back in the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, like. All those tradition uh, games with Miami, the the Catholics versus the convicts, and then the 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 uh, ESPN Classic games with Alabama that they had, and all those type things, man. Uh, they're just a historical program, and uh, you know, college football is better when they are good, uh, but they're just not going to join a conference. And I don't think the NCAA is going to make them join a conference. I don't think anybody can make them join a conference uh, unless they literally broke it down into a Big Ten SEC type setting and said, if you're not a part of one of these two conferences, you don't get in the playoffs. I think that is the only way they would have to join. And I just don't think they're going to make it uh, to where like they have to join a conference uh, because they love 
splitting the, the they don't want to split the money up between everybody else, right? So like when they go to a bowl game and they get their little 1.6 million for going to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, uh, you know, everybody else that's in a conference has to put that money in a pot and it gets split up equally against every team uh, in, in that in that conference. And Notre Dame doesn't have to do that. So uh, I guess you could say they're a little greedy. Yeah, I think be, before, I think prior to a lot of this stuff coming out with the ACC, I, I, I think logistically it just makes more sense to put them in the ACC because you're already there. You're already yeah. a part of the ACC, but you yeah. brought up the reason why I, I kind of don't like them going to the ACC is because I, I think the ACC is disbanding soon. Yep. I think they're one of those conferences. I think the Big 12, it, it's funny, the Big 12 may not be the toughest conference, but they're the best conference right now when you think structurally you know, of what they've, they've got and how they're keeping ahead of all this and making sure that the teams that, the teams that are there are staying happy. So, I mean, it's just, it's crazy to see this, but yeah, I think the ACC is going to disband. And you bring up another really good point that, that looking at those matchups, going to Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan. Uh, I mean, man, Notre Dame, Michigan, that's, that's a fun rivalry right there. So, I mean, just looking at all of that, I think, I, I, I think I like the move to the Big Ten. I think geographically doesn't make any sense anymore now that USC and UCLA are coming over. That's just kind of blowing everything out of the water. Yep. And somehow West Virginia is still part of the Big 12 when all the Big 12 is over here in the Midwest. I don't I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff like that that just doesn't make sense. But I, I, I do like it. I like I like them going over to the Big Ten. And I think it makes more sense, uh, yeah. like what you said with the ACC. Literally, like after hearing what Blake just said, I really want to almost kind of delete all the stuff that I put out on my notes. Like, it makes a lot of sense to go into the Big Ten. Like, holy cow, that's it's a really, really big controversial thing. Just because I know they're the one, one out of four teams that are pronounced as independent. Which I'm not against anything. Obviously, you guys do you and have at it. But like originally, I first had them at the ACC, like Josh mentioned. Just made sense since they already play all these teams. Like even looking at this season, they play NC State, Louisville, Clemson, Wake Forest, Duke, and I mean. Like it to me, it just kind of made sense a little bit about it. But like, um, the I want I want to hear your thoughts about this, Blake, because I know I mentioned this to Josh before um, before we went on the air. Like, there was three reasons to why um, I'll just read it exactly. Um, the three reasons why that they were independent comes down to broadcasting partners for football, a mm -hmm. home for its Olympic sports. And the one that Josh loved the most, access to the national championship. I want to hear because yep. uh, I know Josh was yeah, laughing my, my, hysterically. My first about thing this. was like access to what national championship? Exactly. When's like, the last time you're playing for one? Exactly. <laughs> like overall, it makes sense to go. Like I said, to go to the ACC since they already play these teams. But as you mentioned, Blake, with having all these big name games and seeing all these projected teams that are projectedly coming from the ACC over to the Big Ten, it just makes a lot more sense now just opening up the gates and just letting all of them have at it. I mean, like, overall, realistically, I thought the ACC, but now I'm really second-guessing myself and honestly just thinking they could really sit pretty nice in the Big Ten. Yeah, and, and Jeremy, you made a great point about the, the NBC deal and, and their TV deal, right? Like, yep. they're not – they're not wanting to relinquish any any part of that. Like they want all the money to themselves. Yep. Period. The national championship thing. Okay, you know if Notre Dame goes twelve and zero, I don't care who they play Whoa. or how strong their record is. Notre Dame is getting into the college football playoffs. All right. Now it's expanding to twelve teams it's next definitely year. Getting so in. definitely. Yeah. They're definitely getting in. Even if Notre Dame goes eleven and one, people, they're getting into the college football playoffs. Ten and two are right? probably still up there. Yeah, they're they may you're, be on the fence a little bit, why, but they're still there. You wanna know why? Because they're top five historical program in college football history. That's why. Because what do people do? All right. I know what I do. I'm a I'm a super, super college football nerd, like super college football fan. And if Auburn's not playing or somebody in the SEC, you know, it, the game's a blowout like Georgia at South Carolina last year and it was like 45-7 to seven in the third quarter. I flip over to NBC and I'm like, hey, man, 
here's Notre Dame, all right, and they're playing whoever. I don't care. I'm going to watch the Golden Domers play because they're Notre Dame. Like, that's just – they're historical. And uh, that's why when people turn their TVs on – you're going to see Notre Dame in the college football playoff, and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to watch that. All right. Yep. Notre Dame and Alabama, even though you know Alabama is going to beat them by four touchdowns, all right, you're still going to watch it because it's Notre Dame and Alabama. Those are the type of, of, of games that your grandpa and your great grandpa used to tell you about when you were growing up. Hey, son, back in the 70s, you know, you, that Alabama, they, them and Notre Dame, they played in that Sugar Bowl down there in New Orleans, Louisiana, you know. I, that's what I used to hear. All right. Like, and that's why I I don't know I have a soft spot for Notre Dame like I don't really like the fact that they they're not in a conference but I do enjoy watching them uh, just because of the weight that that their name carries I love their uniforms I think they have the best uniforms in college football uh, I do man I absolutely I like love them. hey their hey. hockey uniforms are pretty clean nope I don't like hey. anything about it. Do, you know that's they they use real gold fragments in those helmets. I know, they do. I know and that, that you know get off your high horse, Richie. Hey, I just I don't um, know. <laughs> uh, I, I love I love the uniforms. I love the stadium. Uh, it's a bucket list stadium of mine that I really want to yeah. go to. Same. Um, let's let's go up there sometime, man. I just want to go there for a hockey we'll, game. We'll get on we'll get on Seat Geek and order our tickets. We'll go. We got a coupon code we can I'll, use. Yeah. I'm, I'm flying to Austin this year, so next year I might have to fly up to Notre Dame, uh, up to South Bend. Heck yeah! Well, I'm I'm coming down to Auburn next year, so then you yeah. you come up, we'll meet up in in North Bend or I guess South Bend. It's it's weird because it's yeah. South Bend and the North, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I, I I'm looking at it too, and, and just thinking of, of how college football is working right now, and just thinking about how it's going to end up splitting up. I, I mean, it's it's literally going to be. The, the civil war all over again. You're going to have the South against the North. Yep. That's basically how it's going to end up breaking up. Uh, so, yep. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm looking at it, It's exciting because I'm just ready for that to be here just because I know it's coming anyways. And everything seems like it's falling apart and, and it's not the way that we know. I, I think by this time next year, we're going to be looking at a whole new face of, of how college football looks. Definitely. Cause I don't, I don't yeah. think the PAC 12 is going to stick around. I, I, I don't, I don't think they're going to be here next year. I really don't. So I think the Pac-12 is going to be gone. I don't know what's happening with the ACC, uh, you know, and, and then you know we we've got the Big Ten, SEC, and I think the Big Twelve is going to stick around just for a little while longer until it's just like, well, we're not really Power Five anymore, and that's not even a thing. So they're going to eventually either disband or you know partner up with somebody. Something's going to have to happen there. So I think by the time we get to this year, next year, or this time next year. The whole face of college football is going to look a lot different. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm excited for it just to be here, just because I'm I'm kind of tired of all of the the, the change, and I just want it to change, just get it over with. Yep. Uh, and let's get back to just loving the game. But everybody who's watching, listening right now, I want you guys to pay attention real quick because I want to break something down for you. You need to write this down in your member bank on a notepad, save it in your phones and your schedule, whatever the case may be. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday at 8:30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when we're going to be releasing videos. We'll make sure we have something released on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If we're not, just make sure you tune in the next time. And then right now, Mm -hmm. if you haven't already been paying attention to Saturdays, Saturday morning, wake up a little early. Wake up at 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And make sure to tune in with us because on Saturdays, that's our Saturday special leading up to college football season. Yes, sir. And then whenever we get to college football season, it's going to be rising in the morning. So make sure to tune in over here on the YouTubes and check us out. All right, because this is our new schedule. We're making sure we're going to stick to it a little little tighter. We're, we're going to work really hard, make sure whatever it is that we got to do, we're going to put something out on Tuesday mornings and Thursday mornings. And then make sure to tune in live 
on Saturday mornings with us, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. You don't want to miss it. We're talking all things college football. This week, we're going to dive into the Pac-12 and look at what we've got running in the Pac-12 for a preview for this season. It's a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of excitement coming for this college football season. Whenever we get to college football season, we're going to pre- preview five different matchups throughout each Saturday, each game day. So wake up and get your game day started off with a nice cup of joe. You can get some Muller Bros coffee and get that brewing and wake yourself up and get going and because we've got to get ourselves ready for game day get ready for college football season coming up everybody congratulations on making it this far we are finally to football season uh, even though it's just preseason football it's still football and so we've got to be happy for that so everybody if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button hit that like button and comment down below if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever you listen to spot to, to podcasts if you're listening right now make sure to just go over and give us a five-star review and share this follow us on social media whatever the case may be tag us in something comment on whatever it is that you want to comment on keep on showing your love and support we just reached our biggest live show last saturday boys that was a lot of fun a lot of excitement love being this. able to see those numbers grow uh and that was such a, a sporadic growth too to see that so we thank you all so much for your love and for for all of your support keep it on going and until next time